Hello and welcome to this quick video on the comparison of my Slash Appetite Burst Les Paul and my Traditional Pro. The Traditional Pro you can't buy new as far as I know anymore. They made four iterations of that guitar. The Slash model you could still buy new. I've seen it on Sweetwater. They're doing a bit of a deal here and there and we'll start at the top and we will make our way down the two guitars because they're very similar. Um, in a lot of ways, but there's some key differences between them which could influence the purchase, aside from price alone. On the Slash model, we have the new Dove Wing headstock, which looks really nice. It's very, very close to the Gibson. That's the new style of the Epiphone headstock. On the traditional Pro, we have the old style headstock, which is that kind of clipped wing um, headstock there which looks okay. Um, I never had too many problems with it until they released this headstock, which just looks really, really nice. I think they've done a brilliant job on that. They both, I believe, this is a Graf Tech nut. And on this one, I think this is Graf Tech nuts as well, as far as I know. Slash has a laurel fingerboard. Traditional Pro actually has rosewood. Now, a big difference um, is that the Traditional Pro has uh, a worn, finish but um, it has a worn finish on the back it's not a gloss finish so if that floats your boat you might really like that because it's not glossy and it's uh, quite a slick feeling neck it does have rather nice Grover tuners there lovely lovely um, loving that which is really cool that's a good thing Epiphone slash model has the deluxe kind of Cluson style tuners they both work brilliantly well. I haven't got an issue with either of them. It's really purely, it's an aesthetic thing, I would say, if you're that bothered. They both have trapezoid inlays. They both have your standard uh, nickel style frets or nickel frets. Um, they both have binding as well, which is really nice. They both, it's absolutely fine. The, uh, the binding, funnily enough, on the traditional Pro is actually very, very good. It's very, very well done. It's, it's very, very nicely done. Really, really clean, as I said in my initial review. Um, the Slash model is not bad either, um, I would say potentially not quite as clean, you can see some bleeding edges there, it's not quite as clean as the traditional Pro and it has, it does have the, uh, the gloss neck, which I personally don't really have a problem with, gloss neck, it actually feels very nice, it's not sticky, um, it's very easy to glide up and down. They both do have chunky old necks, absolutely no doubt about that. This is the Slash Custom C. They actually called this a Slim D when it was released. This one really isn't a Slim D, I'll be honest with you. It's, it is a chunky old beast. It's very, very, very similar to this neck, except it's a D shape rather than C shape. It doesn't make an awful lot of difference, really. Um, I know some people can get a bit funny about D or C. Um, they both are very, very comfortable next. They're both chunky monkeys, um, which is quite nice. I mean, we're talking sort of 22 and a half odd millimeters depth wise at the first fret and about 25 millimeters at the 12th on both of these guitars. So they're both pretty, pretty chunky on the chunky level. Pit guard on this one which you can remove. Um, no pit guard on this one at all. There aren't even the holes for it. So you don't have to worry about sort of leaving any screw holes or anything like that. You yeah, you could put a pit guard on this one. I really wouldn't um, bother, but hey, horses for courses. This has got custom pro buckers in it. There's no split coil on these. This has got just the normal Epiphone pro buckers in it. And these do actually have split coil, which is a nice feature. Um, I'll show you. Go in there, split coils, boom, 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 split coils, yeah. Nice um, clean tones with that. A nice kind of almost stratty esque tones. I mean, it's never going to sound like a strat, is it? Let's be honest, it's a Les Paul, it's a big fat thing. But it's um, it does sound really nice, actually. It sounds, re it's very, very usable. Gives you some diversity. Here, you've got nothing like that, but you do have CTS pots. You do have the big fat orange capacitors in there. And you do have actually really good wiring in here. Um, I'll try to link to that as well. I'll link to my original video review on this one. These are alpha pots. They work very, very well indeed. Um, these pickups caused initial controversy when they were first released on this guitar because they weren't the Seymour Duncan. But hey, if you wanted the Seymour Duncan, it's going to cost you a little more money. This guitar, although yes, it's the more one of the more expensive Epiphone models, it's not one of the crazy expensive ones. We're not talking like the Dave Grohl signature model and all that sort of stuff. It hasn't reached those levels of expense yet. Although I have noticed on the second hand market, certainly in the UK anyway, these are actually increasing in price now because you 
I think you struggle to get them new. So on the used market, I've seen them gradually increasing, which is why I wanted to get my hands on one again, because this is, uh, yeah, I've had a number of these now, but I, I, buy, I keep buying them and selling them and changing my mind. So here we go, that's my latest one. The weight as well, let's talk about weight. So the weight of these two bad boys, they are heavy. They are quite heavy. This one is 4.3 kilograms. This one is 4.2 kilograms. So you better get yourself a thick strap if that is something that you that, that bothers you or something that, to bear in mind. These are not light Les Paul. There's no weight relief in either of these, which I guess you would kind of expect. They are full fat Les Pauls. It's full, it's full body fitness, a thickness. They have a mahogany neck. Uh, there's no messing around. Mah mahogany neck, mahogany body. Uh, on both and they have the maple cap with the maple veneer so this actual this looks nice it looks really nice um, obviously if you you know you could spend a lot more money and go for the Gibson but this is really with all the specs it's a, it's a fraction of the price of the Gibson and it takes you 90% of the way there for that incremental sort of 10% to get the Gibson it's a, it's a judgment call isn't it how far, how far are you willing to go? How much are you willing to put it, how much money are you willing to put into it to get you to the Gibson? Um, Cause the Gibson in the UK costs probably oof, two and a half thousand pounds. So what else are we looking at? Stop tail bridge and tail piece on both of these. These have got the clips inside here, which is, which is quite nice and holds that nice and firmly. This came with uh, strap locks initially and so did this one. So, you know, they, they are quite, similar there's just a few key differences to bear in mind not least of which is the price and it's worth noting that these custom pro buckers i will really sort of hammer home the point that these are brilliant i will be doing a full review of this guitar as well um, i just need to get the time and these are absolutely fantastic i do have the seymour duncan slash pickups which are great pickups obviously it's what slash uses hey but these are so incredibly close I, I originally had the Seymour Duncans in my uh, original Slash Let's Pull I used to have, and there was so little difference between them. The Epiphone, you know, there's a certain amount of trust, I suppose, and I think this is where it's maybe fallen down and people haven't um, bought into these pickups, which is, a, which is a shame because they are brilliant. They are really, really good. They get that gnarly, growly, uh, deep throaty kind of deep tone that Slash has which is what you want. And you want something that's got a bit of um, grit to them as well. These have that, the traditional pro, these have less of that kind of grit and less of that gnarly temperament. They're warmer, which is fine, which is what you expect um, from a normal kind of Les Paul style pickup. Um, but yeah, these have that grit. So um, I personally, in the end, I probably will be keeping this one and I probably will be selling, although it does break my heart, I might sell this one. Although now I'm saying it, um, I'm not sure if I can bring myself to. We'll see. So there'll be plenty more Les Paul, Strats, all that sort of stuff, PRSs, etc., coming on the channel. I uh, just thought it was fun to have a look at these because this could be the last hurrah for one of them and I might shed a tear or they might both be staying, we shall see. So there you are, that's two Les Pauls for you. I will attempt to do a sound demo as well. to my ears this sounds really good as well but it doesn't sound as clear as the slash i would note as well the nine gauge strings on this one and i've got seven gauge on the slash which is to be fair seven gauge billy gibbons um they're really fun uh but they do obviously really really great for bending and what have you i've got these tuned both of them to uh e flat tuning so those are really, really floppy now, and it still sounds really punchy. So the fact that it still sounds really punchy, really clear, and cuts through, uh, to me, obviously the slashes, you know, the pickups are really, really good. They're really, really good pickups. These are awesome pickups too. They just have a bit more of a warmer 
sound to them. They're not as clear as the slash pickups, but they're both really, they're both really good. You know, both really good. You, you, you're not going to be, depending on what you're looking for, you shouldn't be that unhappy with either. Um, obviously, these are thicker strings. So I've got to, you know, I've got to play these a lot less delicately than I've got to play on the slash. But the, you know, the point there is that the tone's still there on the slash. It still sounds really good. Both nice guitars, different kinds of pickups. Um, I'll do especially, you know, let's do split chord as well so you can. So the split chord sounds pretty nice. extra level of versatility with this one which is pretty cool i like that um there you are both really really lovely guitars in fairness it's fun to do a comparison but you can't really go wrong with either so there you are okay see ya bye